Uh, welcome everyone uh, to the, uh, the webinar and it's, it's really just a tutorial for that uh, second assessment item which is the interview report. Uh, you'll see the, the PowerPoint there up on the screen I think and you'll also probably see my, my picture somewhere off to the side. Um, so, but uh, as, as we go through, if you have anything that you want to say or questions you want to ask, uh, please don't hesitate to do that, okay? So uh, with regard to the, the webinar uh, that we're looking at, uh, obviously the first thing you're going to need to do is to have a look at the, uh, the actual question itself. Now, when you're looking at the question itself, um, please make sure that you, you note carefully uh, some of the, the critical elements of the question. Uh, so yeah. it suggests there that you need to uh, interview a cross-cultural missionary. Now, that cross-cultural missionary uh, can be someone who is either currently involved in cross-cultural mission work or has been in the past. And you're trying to understand um, their views on the, the missional challenges which have confronted them in their missional context. Now, uh, by that, what I'm really asking you to do is to, to find out from them what are some of the specific challenges that you have encountered in your work in cross-cultural ministry, all right? So uh, just a reminder too, that if you are doing the 500 level, that uh, in the 500 level, there is just a little bit of extra uh, expected of you, particularly in that second assessment area, where you're asked not only to summarize, but to analyze um, three of the major missiological challenges faced by your interviewee. And so when I'm asking you to analyze it, uh, really what I'm expecting you to do is to perhaps dig a little more deeply uh, into the, the challenges that are being shared. Now, of course, uh, if we go back to the previous screen uh, for the 300 level students, uh, there's only 600 words that uh, are allocated for that. You'll notice that I've got the uh, description of the missional context in which your interviewee has served, and that's 150 words, but then the actual summary of the three missiological challenges, uh, you've only got 600 words, so you've really only got a couple of hundred words for each. Uh, but of course, for the 500 level students, uh, you've got just a little bit more uh, there, and I'm expecting perhaps a little uh, extra digging into the nature of those challenges. All right, uh, any questions to that point? I think the, the next uh, screen might actually just make things perhaps a little clearer for you as well. Uh, you'll see there that I've actually highlighted and made some comments on each of those for you. Uh, the first thing is uh, to use that description of the missional context essentially as uh, the introduction of your, your essay, all right? So you'll set it out as you would set out a normal essay with an introduction, uh, but that description of the missional context, that can actually form your introduction. It's only about 150 words, but just try to give us some sort of idea about this, uh, the context out of which they have been operating. The second thing, of course, is looking at the, uh, the three missional challenges. Um, here, I, I want you to summarise those challenges, and it's at this point that you might then begin to, to try and have a look to see uh, what are some of the, the things that you are finding in, in some of the, the books on mission, some of the journals on mission, about these kinds of challenges. So uh, in your report, you're going to be providing a summary of what your interviewee has said, but then you may say, for example, um, that uh, so-and-so, uh, winter and uh, the year or, or whatever, um, 2015 uh, with, with the, the date, uh, sorry, with the page number, um, reflecting on these kinds of challenges says such and such. Does that make some sense to you? Mm. So what, what I'm simply trying to do is to say, look, you, you talked with your missionary uh, interviewee, and now you're also trying to get a bit of a, a wider picture as to what other people might be saying about this sort of thing as well. And then the third element of it is for you to, to discuss um, the sponsors that your interviewee has had to those particular challenges. So as you're interviewing, uh, you're going to say, look, I, I want you to perhaps think and describe for me three of the main missional challenges that you've had during your time. And, and they may want a bit of time just to uh, gather their thoughts. And then 
as they describe those challenges, then I want you to press them a little bit further and say, well, how did you respond to those challenges? What were some of the things that you felt were important for you? And so you're, you're trying to glean from them uh, as much as you can out of their experience. And then the last part of it is to come up with some kind of proposal for how we might educate churches in Australia in a better way so that we might meaningfully support uh, those who are working in cross-cultural mission settings. Now, I realise that the word count is fairly limited uh, for this assignment. In fact, I have tried to increase it somewhat, but the, uh, the moderator um, seems to want to make sure that we're, we're staying within our word count. So that's, that's the way we've got to operate, unfortunately. All right, any questions to this point so far? Um, Peter, yeah? how do you want us to refer to the interviewee? So when we're writing our assignment, yep. do we name them or do we say the missionary or do we say... Okay, them? yeah, that's probably a very good idea. Um, you, you, I would suggest for the sake of... Um, for the sake of your interviewee, you're probably best not to give their full name. Um, you may choose to give them a pseudonym, that is a made-up name. And if you're going to do that, it's probably worth just putting a footnote uh, the first time you use their name and just put a footnote to indicate that this is a pseudonym uh, for your interviewee. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I found with this kind of assignment in the past that a lot of people, particularly if the missionary has been involved in a fairly sensitive area, uh, that this has not been a bad idea. So um, mm. it, in, in some sense, it will be up to the missionary themselves. Some of them are very happy to have their name included in the report, but I would be offering uh, right up front to say, look, I'm really happy to put in a pseudonym for you. Um, and indeed, in some particularly sensitive cases too, I've had people who've suggested that they'll actually put in a, a pseudonym for the mission organisation's name as well, so that there's no uh, possible... Um, repercussion for the missionary involved. Does that make sense? So we were, when we're writing, we are writing um, in terms of, so not, we're not writing generally about um, the context, we're writing specifically that this missionary said this, blah, blah, blah. That, blah that's exactly right. So, so it is an interview blah, report. Blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. So it's an interview report and you're actually going to be uh, reflecting back on what your interviewee has said. So um, it, it is, it is a, a bit, bit tighter than, than a more generalised uh, reflection on some of the challenges that missionaries face, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. All righty. Um, now, look, the next thing is um, you, you'll have uh, possibly already organised someone that you're going to speak with, but in conducting the interview, what I suggest to you is that you try to categorise the uh, the types of challenges that they are facing. Now, for example, uh, your interviewee may be reflecting on some of the personal challenges that they've had. And uh, so in, in terms of personal challenges, it might be uh, their, their emotional journey. Um, it might be uh, personal challenges to do with their family. Um, and so it, it might be a range of things like that. Um, personal challenges could even perhaps include things like their finances. And so you could look, at, but what you're trying to do is just to listen to what they have got to say and think what kind of category of challenge would this fit into? For others, uh, some of the challenges that they refer to may be spiritual challenges. Uh, you know, I never anticipated uh, that there would be this level of spiritual warfare involved. And so, uh, some of them may actually begin to reflect upon things like that. For some of them, it may, may be structural concerns, um, concerns about the way in which uh, the, the mission organisation operates and uh, they, they, they find it difficult, they find communication difficult, uh, perhaps communication back home, communication perhaps with other missionaries on the field. And so it could be a structural issue. Uh, for some, it might be a cultural issue and uh, reflecting on something of the enormous challenge that they've found in, in becoming uh, culturally embedded. Um, some of the, the culture shock that they've endured as they've started in their term of service, it, it might have to do with the issue of learning language and the frustration of being able to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. And so all of that to say, I, I want you to think deeply about the kinds of concerns. 
So um, once you've done that, of course, as you're interviewing them, what you're looking for as well is to note how they have responded to those challenges. What are some of the, perhaps some of the important lessons that you can learn by actually listening to them and reflecting on how they've taken the journey? Now, the next thing, of course, uh, once you've had your interview and it's up to you whether you want to uh, audio record your interviews and some people I find uh, really like to be able to do that. And of course, you want to check that with your missionary. Um, but a lot of people will just do an audio interview and then come back and they will then begin to transcribe some of the, the key statements and phrases so that they can actually put in some direct quotes into their interview report. Now, of course, your whole interview report will not just be a, a whole progression of uh, direct quotes. Uh, you may just simply talk about the fact that these were some of the, the issues that your interviewer raised, and you might actually put in just a few poignant quotes that illustrate very clearly the kinds of concerns that they had. But having done that, you want to then have a look to see, well, what have other writers had to say about some of these sorts of challenges? And if indeed they've written about these challenges, um, how do they suggest that these challenges may be uh, addressed? Now, I've got on the bottom of this particular PowerPoint there, you'll see it, a suggestion that you, you search through some of the mission journals uh, and also EBSCO host. And I'll take you to that site in just a moment as well. But when you're searching through some of the mission journals, uh, you can actually do some of that online as well. And so even if you just type a Google search uh, with some of the, the key issues, you'll probably find that a number of the journals will come up on the Google site uh, as well, and you can begin to look at those. Um, you'll also find in some of the, the mission textbooks uh, a range of the, the sorts of issues that will have been raised, I'm sure. So what I'm going to do uh, with you just now is I want to see if I can... Oh, that's what I was going to do. I just lost that. Let me bring that up. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, you can see that now, can't you? All right. So if you go to the EBSCO host site, um, you'll need to type in Malian College, as I've indicated there on the screen. You can see that, can you? Yeah. And the password is just simply welcome. Uh, not a particularly complicated password, but you can just type that in. And once you've done that, it should bring you up to a site that looks something like this. And with that site, uh, just simply click on the EBSCO host web. And once you've clicked on the EBSCO host web, uh, then you will come up with a place where you can begin to type in some keywords or a phrase that you want. And what I strongly suggest is that you also tick uh, this box here, the full text. Otherwise, uh, you'll find that there'll be a lot of articles that come up and it just will give you an abstract of the article, but it won't give you the full text. And for your sake, you probably want to be able to get a hold of the full text. And so what I've, I've just suggested there, perhaps typing in something like um, the relational concerns of missionaries. Now, once you do that, um, you will find that a, a raft of uh, articles will begin to come up. And so you can see that there's some already come up here. And you'll notice because I've ticked that I want the full text, these articles will come up with a PDF uh, full text article. And so you can just click on that full text and then you can actually have a read of it. So I'm going to see if I can actually just get out of this now. Oops, no, I've taken you to the next one. All right, let me just get out of that one for a tick and see if I can uh, get you to the EBSCO host site. Okay, can you see the EBSCO host site there now? So I'll just type that in, welcome, um, and I'll click on that. I'm using two screens, by the way, in case you're thinking that I'm just uh, shaking my head at you the whole time. Um, okay, so relational concerns, I'm going to tick the, the that text, uh, full text box there. And so that brings me up with these kind of articles, okay? So this, this one here, uh, I'll just tick that on that and so you can have a look and see what comes up.
And you'll see there, okay, the article has come up. Now, uh, what you can do with that, of course, is save the article. It's probably not a bad idea. But then you can actually begin to have a trawl through the article. Now, you'll have an abstract. It'll tell you uh, basically an overview of what's contained in it. But then um, it's probably not even a bad idea to begin to just scroll your way down. Um, spiritual development, the heading there. Uh, let's tr trial on down a bit further. Cultural adjustment. Now, of course, that may well be something that is a, a significant issue of concern for the, your missionary that you're talking to. Uh, scroll on down a little bit further. Psychological development. Um, let's go a little bit further and see what other sorts of um, topics come up. Um, so, look, it, it's worth just trying a, a number of things in EBSCO Host there, and you'll probably find if you start putting in some keywords that you'll have a range of, of significant articles that, that will come up. And that will just give you some extra uh, material to work with uh, on, your, uh, on your presentation. Okay? Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Yes. Okay. Um, so finally then, uh, what you'll need to do is, of course, make sure that you have a, a complete list of your references uh, in your, your essay. And please make sure that you use the assignment style guide in the setting out of your essay. And you'll have, if you've used it already, you'll have seen that the assignment style guide has a title page. It then has a page uh, for your abstract. And, uh, of course, wherever you've got an, an essay that is uh, 1,500 words or more, then you'll require an abstract. So uh, for the 500 level students, you'll, you'll be required to provide us with an abstract. Uh, an abstract is simply a summary of the main flow and conclusion of your essay. It's just giving me, within about 150 words, an overview of what, what is contained in this, this essay and um, just a brief statement about your conclusion. So it's, it's not another assignment, but it, it's, it, nor is it just an introduction. It's an overview of the whole of the assignment. Um, but make sure that you use the assignment style guide and that you have on your last page, of course, your list of references as well. Now, that concludes the PowerPoint side of things. Uh, so can I ask you now, um, are there other things that you would like to ask me about before we, we wrap this up for tonight? No. So you Yeah, I think I'll just um, email and see if I can Skype somebody um, about this. So. Yep, that's yeah. a good idea. Sure. Yeah, and and as you said, um, ask her if I can just record the yep. Skype so that I can go back. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that sounds great. Yep. Good idea. Yep. And so, Esther, are you cool with things on, on all of this too? Yes, I've already interviewed my person. Oh, well, you, 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 you're <laughs> ahead. Good girl. Okay. Oh, actually, I think Roger did this, didn't he? No, he hasn't done this subject. Oh, has yet. he? Oh, you better get no, on with him and tell him he's got to cool. get on and do this. Yeah, oh. yeah. I said, you can't copy the same thing as me. You have to be interviewed. Someone <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, Grace, how are you? Are you fine with all of this? Yes, I do. Yeah. I just don't know... Um, um, what I have experienced in uh, Australian chess is Vietnamese chess. Yes. Um, but um, is uh, what I have learned from Vietnamese chess can I apply to educating? Yes, you so, can. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So, so you'll be interviewing someone who's also working in a cross-cultural context. And, uh, and what you want to be able to bring out in your report is, is how can I actually then go back to my home church and educate people about how to support cross-cultural workers who are facing some of these kinds of challenges? Because one of the issues I think very often is that people in our home churches just lack a, a degree of understanding of what many cross-cultural missionaries go through. Mm. So that's part of the, the aim of this assignment is to get people thinking about, well, it's, it's well and good for me to interview and for me to get a better idea about the challenges that they're facing and perhaps how some other writers have suggested that these challenges might be addressed and so on. But how do I then in turn help people in my own uh, home church context to understand how best to support missionaries. Because one of the biggest challenges I think we often find is that missionaries um, feel that so many people back at home just have no idea about 
the depth of the challenges that they face, uh, whether it be challenges of, of isolation, uh, or whether it be financial challenges, or whether it be family challenges, or the spiritual challenges. So many missionaries have said to me over the years, you know, people back at home that they just don't really understand. So that's really the, the, the main goal of it. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. Well, if, if you're all cool with that, uh, what I'll do is I'll just go on here now to stop recording and um, trust that everyone goes well with the assignment and that it'll be a really fruitful exercise for you.